Hi and welcome back to Rhinoceros and Grasshopper Tutorials Complex 3D Modeling with your host Saki Brazis and this, will going, this is going to be our part 3 of our introduction series and we'll conclude all the different elements that we have seen so far and finish up basically with the last ones and after this you should really have an in-depth understanding of, the, of your Rhino interface and you should re, you know you should be in the position to actually now start modeling and know where to find and execute different um, tasks and options. So the last things that I want to show you is going to be our status bar, one of the most important things and maybe not probably explained by few and it is actually quite significant to understand it because it holds so many different options that will help you to draw and I just want to take the time to actually walk you through that. So if I open up back my uh, our Quick Tour, so I press F1 and this will open up your browser. Just go to Quick Tour, drop down the Rhino window. Yep, and this is McNeil's uh, basically illustrating our uh, his Rhino interface. And we looked at all the different functions, so we actually have done almost everything as an overview. So I will dive into the different topics again in another series. But right now we're doing the introduction, just giving you an overview to actually, you know, find your way in Rhino. And the last things I want to conclude is going to be position number 7 and position number 13, which is your status bar. So what is your status bar? Um, if you go down to status bar, we can see that, again, it has a description, which is maybe not that... Um, uh, helpful let's say it is helpful but let's just look at it more in depth so if I just hide this one what we have here is our so-called status bar we have some general informations that are located at the left side of the status bar right and if I just close that um, we should have here on the right side of the status bar we have some helper functions out. I always call them a little helper functions, which basically are snapping tools or some other commands and sets of tools like, for instance, the gumball, the smart track, the record history and OSNAP, etc. These are just like functions that help you to be more efficient in Rhino. So let's first look at the left side here, what that actually tells us. and. Basically, the first thing I want to talk about is if you just go to one of your viewports and start to hover with your mouse, you should see here downstairs in the X and the Y that the values are changing accordingly. So if I try to navigate to my origin point, which would be here my um, intersection of the green and red line, which are basically the X dimension and the Y dimension, and if I try to hover at that intersection, you will see that I get pretty much close to zero, zero values for the X and Y, which basically just tells me that it just shows wherever I'm hovering with my mouse, it's just telling me the current location and that for the X and the Y. And next to is actually the Z. So the Z value is going to be zero because right now I'm in the top view and in the perspective, the C plane, the construction plane is set to the zero height of Z. But right now, that's maybe not that important to you to understand. But if I go to my, of any of to my viewports, it will have the same effect. In, in the logic, you would assume that basically if I go to my front and I go up, that should be the Z axis, right? Because the Z axis is the axis that goes up here. But that is not the case. And like I said, I'm going to cover that in the other tutorial. But that has to do something with the construction planes and the construction planes actually always show you in the color of, let's say, red, green and blue, the dimensions. And green is also always located with, the, let's say, with the Y dimension. So my current view is uh, my C plane is maybe not helping me to identify the Z value. But like I said, we will cover that in another series. So that is basically just telling me what I have here. Then the next thing is the meters um, or this little checkbox where the meters is displayed and this is your current unit size basically. So this is telling me um, my unit system and for instance if I would do a line and I would start at my position zero and I would just do a line that is one meter long so I will do that again zero 
one. Basically, this is going to be a line that is one unit long. Yeah. So right now my grid, uh, which is basically this unit cells, is set to five by five. That means that this is not one meter, but this is five meters by five meters. And the grid is something that I will show you later on. But basically, you can always just disable the grid by pressing F7. So if you press F7, you should just remain with the geometry and not the grid anymore. So this construction plane will not be illustrated and you can just bring it back by pressing F7. So that's quite handy. So if I just go into my top and select that line and I type in distance, I can now just try to measure the length. And to measure that, I will use something which is called the O-snap and I will activate my end and if I just go to the ends it shows me one meter. So what does that mean? Um, it means it gives you a unit option but you can change that option. You don't have to draw in meters. If that's not what you want you can change that by simply just clicking on here. This is just one version but you can just click on the meters with your right mouse button and go to unit settings and then it will open up a window basically this is the rhino options which will be the actually cover up the next series of tutorials will be um, revolving around the options window but right now we are already in the options window so just have a quick look at the model units and we can go to the model units here and if you click on it it will get to you to a drop down menu and you can actually change your unit settings so for instance you don't have to stay in meters, you could go, where did I see it? You could go in light years. I mean, <laughs> that, that is funny, I didn't know that. You could do that actually. But okay, um, if, you're not, if, you're not, if you don't want to work with the metric system, you can of course go to the inches, feet, uh, miles, and you can see that there are different setting your units basically, like light years. And you can have no units at all, which would be something. And then right now, because I use the metric system, I have the meters set. So that's basically why I'm using that. I'm okay with that, so okay. And um, this will always show you the current layer that you are on, which is always resembled here. So this is just showing you what uh, layer you're using. If I would do another one, let's see what happens there. It shows you the different layer as options so just keep in mind that you can always access the layers in the status bar I can just delete that and now let's look at this little helper function so I'm going to cover each of them in a separate tutorial um, just to give you a quick overview these are helper methods that enable you to actually draw in Rhino very efficient so the first thing I could show you basically is going to be uh, if I disable O snap it's going to be grid snap and as that name implies, it snaps to that grid that you have drawn here. And in such a way that, let me just show it to you, I will go up here and use a point method. So I click on that with my left mouse button. And now it will always snap to the intersection of these unit cells. As you can see, that's basically the grid snap. So it snaps to that grid that you have given, right? Which is right now, in my case, meters and one unit cell is five meters long. So this is basically grid snap. My author is basically, if I just go onto that, is a whole um, different game. So author is just helping me if I want to draw a line, for instance. If I don't have author on and I have my grid snap on, if I use a line and I press my first start of line, I define it. I'm pretty much free, right? I can just draw it anywhere I want because I don't have any guiding information. I could just place it anywhere I want to on that two-dimensional plane, right? But as soon as I activate author, I am more or less bound to the X and Y dimension. So it's going to be a straight line and I just have to more or less hover with my mouse respective to an angle and it will snap to either the X or the Y dimension. And this tool is very, very handy if you are drawing any kind of plans and you are using straight angles or um, just want to draw a straight line, this will help you to do that. So that's awful. Plana is something that we will cover in a different tutorial, but this will just allow you to draw as it sells you in a planar field, which doesn't have to be always our current construction plane. So even if you have something drawn in two-dimensional, uh, in a three-dimensional context, 
you could activate planar and then access an, a z level, a value in the z height and the z height, and then you can just um, draw planar drawing there. But I know that's abstract, so I'll uh, look at that in another tutorial. So two things maybe before I go to the OSNAP is going to be the smart track and the smart track. Again, don't worry, this will all be topics of their own, but I'm just going to give you an overview. Smart track is something most familiar basically from AutoCAD or any CAD software which actually draws two dimensional plans. It's just like helping you and this is a smart track. So what that means is you can, if you just hover over it, it now will have that point located basically and will enable you to snap and use that as a guiding direction. So what I did with my, with my smart track here, I said I want to draw a line and I went to the end using my OSNAP function and it turned into a white dot, which means, okay, it fixed whatever dimension or direction I have. And to that, it will now be orthogonal or perpendicular or have a fixed angle that I gave it, uh, give it. And I can draw actually a line now using this as a guiding instruction, let's say. But like I said, that's just an overview. And I have my amazing gumball here, which has made a lot of progress in Rhino 6. It is uh, really amazing right now. Um, you can actually access all the quick commands that you want to do, like move, copy, rotate, uh, extrude, um, and all uh, some more functions by just gumball. You can really quickly model something up and um, you know use the logic to generate any kind of structure you want. And this is really um, a nice feature, but like I said, Gumball will be another topic. And now let's look at the OSNAP. And OSNAP is something very important. Again, this is an overview, but basically OSNAP just lets you jump to certain points onto your geometry. For instance, I have a line here and I want to catch the endpoints. So I make sure I go to OSNAP, I activate it, and I go to my ends and check them. And now I can, if I want to put a point onto my ends, I can actually do that because it is snapping to the end of my geometry. The same could be applied, for instance, for the mid, so the middle of my geometry. In that sense, the middle of my curve is now accessible as a catching point, as a snapping point. I can use that to move the object, transform it, or place objects on that, or use that as a uh, location to start from, basically. And there are quite a few of them, but it would be too much to actually explain it now. But just keep in mind that you have these options and there's this project, which is very helpful because it will always allow you to draw on your construction plane, no matter where you are. So for instance, um, if you, I give you a quick overview of that, if I have my project on, I have now an object that is somewhere up in the Z dimension. And if I take my line, I could just go to that line here. And this is something that would happen if I don't have my project on. So I have my line, I want to draw a new line, right? And just catch that. And now look at my Z value, basically. If I go to that point, it will show you that it's now in the Z value, it's 10 meters up. But I want to draw a line that is actually projected onto this construction plane. And for that, I just push my project on. And now if I go up there, you can see in Cyan right now, that should be maybe white in your case, that the, po the point of start is now projected onto my C plane, right? And now I can just draw my line, which is perfectly uh, projected on my construction plane and use this line as a guiding figure to do that. Okay, so that should be it. This is basically the quick overview and now we will dive into the separate little elements and look at the different functions more in depth. But this was my introduction. So I hope this helped you and I hope you have now a better understanding of Rhino 6 and the interface and you can actually get started. And if you want to, please just subscribe to my channel and just wait for more content. It's going to be coming up and I will, like I said, talk, uh, tackle all the different elements and go into depth. So yeah, I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching. Bye.